Well, Facebook says it's entering the cryptocurrency market. Earlier today, the company announced a new digital currency called Libra, and it'll be used on, on a blockchain-based system called Calibra. Well, the company plans to launch in 2020, and it will have its own app as well as an avail be available on Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp. Facebook hopes as a system will allow users to send money as easily as a text message and at, quote, low to no cost. What was that drone doing exactly, and, and, and was it, as the Iranians say, a, a, in effect a provocation? So that drone was doing what uh, drones do all over the world, which is surveillance. So that drone's job was to watch the Iranian Navy, particularly small Iranian Navy boats, to make sure that they were not loading weapons that they were going to take out into the Persian Gulf and conduct attack. Tensions have escalated from a simmer to a boil. In the past few hours, New York Times reported President Trump approved military strikes on a number of Iranian targets, what's called a measured response after an American drone was shot down. Planes were in the air, ships in position, when suddenly, according to the Times, the order came to stand down. It's not clear why President Trump changed his mind on the operation or if this was a logistical decision. It's also not clear if the strikes might still go forward. And Huawei has filed a new lawsuit against the U.S. government for seizing equipment as reports claim that the Trump administration could require 5G equipment to be manufactured outside of China. Governor Greg Abbott is deploying 1,000 Texas National Guard troops to the Texas-Mexico border. He made that announcement today at the state capitol. The additional 1,000 troops will assist federal agents at new facilities that will be opened for single adults in the Rio Grande Valley and El Paso. They'll also help Border Patrol agents at the ports of entry. Russia is using its words and its actions to send a warning to the U.S. tonight. Moscow has sent a warship to Cuba and says the U.S. weapons buildup in Europe could spark a repeat of one of the most dangerous conflicts of the Cold War. That the Mexican government, uh, President Lopez Obrador, has ordered 15,000 of his troops to the northern border, the U.S.-Mexico border. And now to the border crisis. Mexico announced today it has sent 15,000 troops to its border with the U.S. and confirmed they are detaining migrants there. Breaking news on meats from China. Have you learned anything since the well, start of the show? We're all scrambling trying to confirm what exactly is happening. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm told that this is... So last week, China had flagged that they were concerned about fake uh, pr approval permits and uh, certificates for Canadian pork products. So now China has basically... I mean, this is upping the ante in the Canada-China dispute... Um, which we all know the root of. But they've now asked Canada to suspend all its permits for all meat products and all pork products. So China's our third largest market for all of this stuff. That's huge. Um, the Canadian government hasn't yet made a decision on whether to suspend those permits. Uh, that could happen while they sort out what they call a technical issue. Uh, but the Chinese are suggesting that all Canadian meat is somehow fraudulent, fraudulently approved for export, which is certainly not the case, but, you know, we'll see what happens. How do you respond to this, Bob? Well, they don't know how to respond to it. And what happens if they go after lobsters or fish? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that could be the next thing on the... The, the pork, for example, 45% of the pork 
from Quebec. So that's a real, mm -hmm. really hurts the, the, the liberals. But the West, it's huge. There's no, I don't know what the solution here is. I mean, the Chinese have said we will not uh, uh, bow to anything until you uh, release uh, Meng Wanzhou. So. Just days away from a pivotal G20 summit, the U.S. has opened a new front in the trade war against Chinese supercomputers. But how credible is the charge that these supercomputers pose some threat to the U.S. national security and foreign policy interests? First Huawei, now supercomputers. On Friday, the Trump administration announced it has targeted another Chinese high-tech industry with whom America competes head-to-head, -head, supercomputers. The blacklisting of five Chinese supercomputing firms will block them from the U.S. technology they depend on. The U.S. cited national security for blacklisting the five, as was the case with the Chinese telecom giant Huawei. So how does the U.S. define national security and foreign policy interests? Why now? And and with the expected meeting between President Xi Jinping and President Donald Trump days away, what message does the move to does the move send to the Chinese side? And now to details on uh, the Zimbabwe story. Zimbabwe's government has banned the use of international currencies such as the U.S. dollar, South African rand, and British pound. Zimbabwe has not had its own fully fledged currency since 2009, when authorities abolished the Zimbabwean dollar due to hyperinflation. The ban comes in immediately and it has caught locals by surprise. Shops and most businesses will only be allowed to accept the substitute currency, which is the RTGS dollars. Authorities in Zimbabwe are believed to have introduced uh, this new measure to curb uh, rampant black market uh, currency trading. Hi, this is Dr. Mercola. One of the most fundamental basic human rights is individual autonomy. The question is, will it survive the 21st century? Or will technology sites like Google and Facebook accumulate the power to eliminate your civil liberties and censure essential information that could save your life? What I'm about to tell you may sound shocking, but it is essential you listen very carefully as it may be the most important information I've ever shared with you. It's crucial for you to be able to take control of your health. So what's this all about? It's about information and your right to access it. You see, over the years, the biggest library in the world has been concentrated at one single source. And can you guess what that is? Google. And unfortunately, Google has recently removed almost all of my content from their search results, as I have been consistently critical of them and many of their top advertisers and partners like the pharmaceutical and chemical industry. Google worked for many years to earn your trust, but it was just setting a trap to twist that trust into powerful control. Google had the brilliant idea of utilizing crowdsourcing to provide you with the best answers to your questions, pushing the most frequently selected content to the top of the search results. And that was truly a democratic and powerful system to reward people for sharing information and helping you locate the information that was most valuable to you by essentially sharing the most popular, highest quality content. And my information was frequently at the top of hundreds of different search terms uh, in Google because people like you found it to be valuable. But as Google's power grew enormously, the goal of providing this service to you has changed. That goal is now to become even more powerful by uniting with other powerful industries and the government to force their beliefs on the masses and control the future so they can benefit from it. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman also arrived in Osaka today for the G20 summit. He's accused of ordering the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. His country is also the recipient of Canada's largest ever arms deal. CTV's Annie Bergeron Oliver has uncovered new details about the controversial shipments. 
Light armored vehicles keep rolling off the assembly line at this London, Ontario General Dynamics plant as part of a contentious contract with Saudi Arabia. The details of the 2014 deal have always been secret, but a new report on military exports reveals that over the last three years, 217 armored combat vehicles, nearly all LAVs, have been shipped to Saudi Arabia. Military exports worth more than $1.8 billion. All this to a country facing increased scrutiny over its human rights record after the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi and the war in Yemen. Saudi Arabia shouldn't be a friend and it's I guess only to friends that you should sell equipment that is so dangerous and that has been used by Saudi Arabia against its own population. At the height of the global outrage over Khashoggi's assassination, the Prime Minister told CTV he was looking for a way out of the deal. Uh, we are engaged uh, with the export permits to try and see if there is a way uh, of, uh, of no longer exporting these vehicles to Saudi Arabia. Months later, CTV News has learned no new arms export permits have been issued, but the deal itself is moving forward as planned. Saudi Arabia has been a very important export market for Canada, and it's been a particularly important export market for light armored vehicles. While Canada is fulfilling its end of the deal, the kingdom isn't. The Crown Corporation that helped broker the LAV deal between General Dynamics and the Saudis was owed $1.9 billion at the end of 2018. Sources say in the new year some payments have been received. The debt, though, is still well over $1 billion. Let's take a look at some of the top headlines from around the nation. Now, Democrats pushed this week to make congressional approval mandatory for any military strikes against Iran. But as Natalie Brand reports from Capitol Hill, the measure fell short of the 60 votes needed. Democratic senators forced a vote on an amendment that would require President Trump to seek congressional approval before ordering military strikes. This is a very, very strong signal to the president to don't get into a war, war in Iran. The move came one week after the president called off a strike against Iran for shooting down a U.S. drone. At the G20 summit, President Trump spoke with Russian President Vladimir Putin and German Chancellor Angela Merkel about Iran. He says he's still open to negotiations. There's absolutely no time pressure. Um, I think that uh, in the end, hopefully it's going to work out. If it does, great. And if it doesn't, you'll be hearing about it. Well, Donald Trump, of course, arrived in Seoul fresh from committing at the G20 summit to resuming trade talks with China and halting new tariffs. But already there are fresh doubts about the costs of that economic ceasefire and just how long it can last. The G20 summit concluding and, at the very least, a damaging trade war on pause for now. Perhaps the smiles said it all. Speaking later in Seoul, Donald Trump was again proud to say he was in no hurry to strike a deal with China. We're winning and we're winning big because we have created an economy that is second to none, greatest in the world. China's foreign ministry quoted President Xi Jinping. China is sincere about continuing negotiations with the United States, but negotiations should be equal and show mutual respect. But some U.S. business leaders cautioned this was just a temporary time out, given ongoing U.S. claims about China's unfair trade practices and intellectual property theft. One major concession from Mr. Trump, U.S. tech firms to be allowed to keep selling parts to Huawei, which was put on a trade blacklist last month amid fears it could facilitate spying. These are American companies, John, that make product. The companies were not exactly happy that they couldn't sell. U.S. governments have largely kept trade and security issues separate till now.
leaflet and to talk to you after, okay? You are very welcome to talk to the people here. Everyone who's here is able to come talk to you, and I'm happy to talk to you for a minute afterwards. I do want to be very clear. I want to be clear about two things, okay? That because Canada is a fantastic liberal democracy, you're able to be here and express your point of view. I didn't speak over you, okay? So second of all, second of all, Maduro has systematically crushed democracy and human rights in Venezuela. Ridiculous! And Canada is proud to stand for human rights and democracy around the world. Yeah, and your democratic friends in Saudi Arabia, are they democratic? Are they democratic? Overlooking the election process in Venezuela, and it says, and they say, all of the processes have been according to law, transparent, and yet you go there and talk to the people, you lie, because you know the law. You know better. You know better than the ordinary opposition wealthy Venezuela. You know better. And you say that he's a dictator? You are lying. Shame. Aren't you mad? Aren't you mad? They have all shown an interest in dragging the United States into a conflict. I do not believe that President Trump wants to do that. I, I believe President Trump ran on a campaign promise of not in, bringing the United States into another war. But I believe President Trump's intention to put pressure, the policy of maximum pressure, on Iran in order to bring Iran to its knees so that we would succumb to pressure is doomed to failure. And I think these four individuals know this. Are you going to have tanks out on 4th of July at the Lincoln Memorial for speech? We're going to have a great 4th of July in Washington, D.C. It'll be like no other. It'll be special. And I hope a lot of people come. And it's going to be uh, about this country. And it's a salute to America. And I'm going to be here. And I'm going to say a few words. And we're going to have planes going overhead, the best fighter jets in the world, and other planes, too. And we're going to have some tanks stationed outside. Any scientist in this country should be very worried because this is hurting the U.S. science and technology. You decided to move to the U.S. in 1989 mm -hmm. as a young Chinese scientist. Mm -hmm. Tell us what attracted you here in the first place. I was the very first person in the world who has made the high quality thin films of high temperature superconductor. Mm. The United States is where science, exciting science, uh, uh, is taking place. And uh, so, you know, if you want to go to the best place to do science, you come to the United States. You were arrested mm -hmm. in May 2015. Yes, indeed. For sharing American technology with China. Mm -hmm. What happened that day? These uh, armed agents rush into my house and uh, you know, uh, yelling, FBI, FBI, running around, and uh, they run it after my wife and daughters uh, at gunpoint. And uh, I was telling myself, uh, do what they say so that they don't shoot me. Like any traumatic event, um, that's going to change life. Although your charges were later dismissed, in 2017, you decided to sue the U.S. and mm -hmm. federal agents mm -hmm. for violating your constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that lawsuit. It's very difficult to sue the government, but uh, when people do uh, wrong, they need to be held uh, accountable so that uh, other people would not have to go through the same experience as we have. That will be worth it. This is happening to other people. Mm -hmm. Recently, we've seen an increasing number of similar cases like yours. U.S. officials also warned against uh, Chinese espionage, saying such activity is a serious national security threat. Are these concerns valid? Each case is different from any other. Right? So um, I, I cannot comment on these, all these cases uh, because I don't know all the facts. Uh, what I do know is the fact in my case. It's now you we hear that so-and-so is being 
accused of doing so and so. You know, what do you expect me to think? I can only think from my own experience. And, 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 and my experience tells me that it's not always necessarily true. So you've been advocating against racial profiling in recent years. What is it like to be a Chinese-American scientist in the current U.S. environment? People are scared. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I even used the word that the people are terrorized. I'm concerned uh, about open research, basic research. It is being described as something that uh, is being stolen. But uh, basic research is open research. It depends on free exchange of ideas and, and collaboration. And uh, that's vital. That's vital to America's competitiveness. So, uh, even though the charge were dropped, our life was wrapped. I've been trying to uh, encourage the scientific community to speak up because um, those policies that try to uh, shut the U.S. up from these exchange is hurting the U.S. interest. Right? When people come here and bring all these different cultures, they make America stronger. So I'm not going to denounce my Chinese ethnicity. You know, I come from China. Only when Chinese Americans speak up for their own interest, we are making the union better. That's what this country is so great about. Now, it's such a historic event, the uh, demilitarized zone, it's about uh, 160 miles long and uh, two and a half miles wide, but at uh, what's called the joint security area there, it comes down to a strip of stone about 16 inches wide. President Trump walked right up to that, pe that strip of stone on the south side with Kim on the north side. The president looked at Kim and said, should I step over? Kim invited him over. Here's how the president described it later on. Listen here. We went and met at the line, and in meeting at the line, I said, would you like me to come across? He said, I would be so honored. And that's the way it worked out. I didn't know really what he was going to say, uh, but it was my honor to do it. The Yellow Vest anti-government movement led a rally against President Emmanuel Macron's plan to ban so-called cyber hatred. The bill will give internet sites just 24 hours to remove offensive content based on race, religion, gender, disabilities, and sexual orientation, but the final law could go much further. Many Yellow Vests believe that they are the real target of the proposal because criticizing Macron sharply or in a rude manner could now be qualified as hate speech. Many accuse the bill of censorship in a country which claims to nearly worship the freedom of speech. In the past few months, we see that when the French media finally does a live interview with the Yellow West, very quickly they cut the interview short for the false and absurd reason of hate speech. It's already clear this law aims to silence opposition to the government. Even if the Yellow Vests aren't targeted, it's clear that pro-Palestinians are. Macron has manipulated false accusations that the Yellow Vests are anti-Semitic to push the equally false idea that anti-Zionism is the same thing as being against people whose religion is Judaism. In February, Macron said he will push through a bill which bans all opposition to anti-Zionism or the ideology that Palestine should be illegally occupied. The bill is another step in the direction of banning all support for Palestinians. I support Palestine, of course, but this does not make me against Jewish people. What the government wants to do is to label anyone who questions their policies as racist or terrorists or anti-Semites or whatever. This false labeling is how the government and the French media try to manipulate public opinion. One word which has been removed from the law's text is Islamophobia which was surprisingly replaced with anti-Muslim. The official reason, to make sure that French internet users have the right to criticize Islam as a religion and the right to blasphemy.
Islamophobia, therefore, is apparently not hate speech to this French government. Rami Mazahari, Press TV, Paris. Let the world know who we are. We're number one now, and we want to stay that way. We can show it. If, you know, Korea could have a military parade. I can't wait. Right now, what he's doing is he's actually showing everybody Fourth of July. We're celebrating our independence, but we're also celebrating the people who fought for our independence. So. I usually associate tanks in the streets with things like Soviet Victory Day celebrations and that kind of thing. It's ridiculous to me that we're having tanks. Why not just have 1957 Chevys? But I'm excited about the speech, and I know that the preparations for the speech probably are costing a pretty penny, but I think it'll be worth it. From a financial sense, it is extremely expensive. Uh, it's taxing for the park services who have to monitor and provide safety for this event. Uh, I think it costs too much money, and they should do other things with their money, like support education. Where it becomes a campaign thing, I'm not good with that. Because this is a government holiday. This is a national holiday. This is not a political holiday.